Hi everyone, I'm Stacy Bryan, pastor at Remnant Church of God. I wanna welcome you out to our services tomorrow, July the 16th. We are located at 1146 East Plant Street in Winter Garden, Florida. We rent the Winter Garden Seventh Day Adventist Church and we are located next to Collison's Funeral Home. If you have been looking for a church home, please look no further. We would love to welcome you into our family and show you the love of Christ. Today, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about our ministry at The Remnant, because in October, it will be our second anniversary. We launched Remnant Church of God two years ago this October. The first Sunday in October is our anniversary. And so I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, what, what the Lord really called me to do and what he really placed in my heart when he said, plant a church. So I know that there are two groups of people that I am specifically called to. The first group of people that I'm called to are the unchurched, people who have never been in church before. And you know, when I'm talking to someone who's never been to church before, they will always tell me something like, I can't go to church because I'm not gonna feel comfortable because people are gonna treat me differently because I have never been to church before. And I want you to know that at The Remnant, we will treat you like family from the moment that you walk in the door. It doesn't matter whether you've been to church before or not. It doesn't matter if you have, uh, you know, if you have a relationship with Christ or not, come into the church and give us a try. I promise you, I promise you, you will feel the love of Christ. I promise you that you will feel like you have been treated with kindness and with love and with grace. So come out and please give us a try because we would love to have you. We would love to welcome you into our family. The second group of people that I know that the Lord has called me to are people who have been broken in the church. You know, a lot of people have experienced church hurt in their past. And to be honest with you, I've even experienced church hurt in my past. It's something that you go through in the church. And it's sad that we do go through that, but it happens. So, you know, when you think about church, church is supposed to be a hospital. You know, God wants you to be there. He wants you to come in and he wants the sick to come in. He wants the brokenhearted to come in. And Jesus comes in and just mends everything. He heals everything. He puts us back together better and he puts us back together stronger. But in the middle of that, before all of that healing can take place, sometimes people will be sitting on that church pew and they will hurt you. Sometimes they may even be in ministry and they'll hurt you. And if that is something that you've experienced, please know that Jesus loves you. Jesus did not intend for you to be hurt and Jesus wants you to feel better. He wants you to uh, just come back into relationship with him. He doesn't want you to stay out of church. He doesn't want you to feel broken. He doesn't want you to feel alone. He didn't intend for any of that to happen. And if you really um, you know, want to have healing, come in, come into Remnant. We would love to talk with you. The first thing I want you to know is I want you to know that you're not alone. Everybody, most everybody has experienced church hurt at one time or another. So please know and understand that you're not alone. Please know that Jesus is on your side. He wants to love you. He wants you to feel encouraged and to feel loved and to feel supported. He wants you to have a church family. So just know that. And um, if you need counseling, if you need help with anything, if you need prayer, reach out to me on social media if you feel comfortable. If you want to call me or to text me, you can do that as well. My cell phone number is 321-297-6357. And if you need to talk or if you need to text, um, I'm happy to talk with you or to just interact with you in whatever way that you feel comfortable. So I just wanted to leave you with that today about our church. And today, you know, on Saturdays, I always leave you with some type of encouragement. So today I wanted to talk to you about the Lord supplying all of our needs. You know, when we are, when we are um, just 
talking about the Lord, when we are praying, when we are thinking about our lives in general, one of the most difficult things that we go through is the weight. You know, we pray, God, you know, I, I have this desire in my heart. Would you please give me the desire of my heart? Would you please meet this need that I have? And you know, in Philippians 4.19, it says that God will supply all of my needs according to the according to his riches and glory. The Lord will supply all of my needs, every single one of them, not just one, but every need that I have, he'll supply it. And you know, I believe that. I believe what it says in his word. I believe that he's going to do it. I believe that he wants to supply all of my needs. I believe he loves me. And because I am his child, he wants to give me great things. He wants to give me good gifts. He wants to bless me. And part of that blessing is supplying all of my needs. And I hold on to that scripture. And I know that the Lord is going to bring it to pass. But how does the enemy use that waiting period to really try and get us to deny Christ. That's really what I want to talk to you about today. Because you know, when you think about it, we can pray and we can pray and we can pray. And we'll go through that season of waiting where we have prayed and we've said, Lord, this is the desire of my heart. And we may have prayed for months. We may have prayed for years. We may have prayed even for a decade or longer. And we still have that same desire that's unmet in our life. And that same desire, it just continues to grow and grow and grow. And we're like, Lord, when I see everybody else having their needs met, I see everybody else having the desires of their heart met, but mine are going unfulfilled. I feel lonely. I feel all alone. My needs aren't being met. When are you going to meet my needs? When are my desires going to be met? And you know, the enemy can come into those moments where we're waiting like that and he can really begin to shout at us and get us to believe what he's saying to us. You know, the enemy shouts at us, but Jesus, the Holy Spirit, he whispers in those whispers, you know, there's so many things that take place, so much reassurance, so much love, so much revelation takes place through the whispers, but sometimes it's so much easier to hear the shouting of the enemy because that shouting is so much louder. That shouting is so much, ne so there's so much negativity in the shouting that it's so much easier for us to believe it. So one of the things that the enemy does to try and get us to deny Christ and it's a process that we go through when we're waiting. So the first thing the enemy will do is he'll say, God doesn't hear your prayers. He hears everybody else's prayers, but he doesn't hear yours. Has the enemy ever told you something like that? You know, the reason why you've waited and waited and waited is because God isn't listening to you. God doesn't hear you when you pray. And if he can get you to believe that, then the next thing he'll tell you is that God doesn't even understand you. You know, God isn't big enough to answer your prayers. He doesn't even understand why you want what you want. You know, you just need to give up now because God has other things that are bigger than you. He has other things that he's doing. You're not important enough to God in this moment. And if he can get you to feel that way, then the next step is, is to get you to walk away. That's really what the enemy's goal is, is to get you to deny Christ. That last step, he'll say, God doesn't love you. God's never loved you. Why would God love you? You have sinned so much. Why would God even think about you? Why would God try and help you in this moment? And if we turn our back on God, if we deny Christ, that's what the enemy wants. He's won the battle if we walk away from Christ. So I want to encourage you today, if you have unmet needs, if you are feeling unfulfilled, know that breakthrough is around the corner. I want to encourage you because just because your needs are unmet doesn't mean that God doesn't hear you. It doesn't mean that he doesn't care. It doesn't mean that he doesn't love you. What it means is that God's taking longer to finish what he started in you. Maybe it's that you're more anointed. Maybe it's that 
the Lord is working out something in you that needs to have that extra time, wait time. Maybe the Lord is perfecting who you are. Maybe he is strengthening your character. Maybe he's strengthening your integrity. Maybe he is uh, just bringing some things out of you. He's changing your heart. He's softening your heart in this process. He's making you more empathetic so that you can have compassion for others in the midst of the waiting. You never know what the Lord is doing in the waiting, but I will tell you this, he will finish what he started and he will supply every single one of your needs. And if you have denied Christ, if you've walked away for a season, I want to encourage you today to come back home. God loves you and he misses you and he misses relationship with you. And more than anything, he wants to have relationship with you. He loves you, he misses you, and he wants you to come back to him. So I want to encourage you today, if you have turned your back on God, or if you have never asked the Lord into your heart, if you've never asked Jesus into your heart, it's really simple. All you have to do is to admit that you've sinned. No matter who you are, you have sinned. I don't care if it's me, if it's you, doesn't matter. Everyone has sinned. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory. And we just need to admit that we have sinned. Lord, I have sinned. Take away my sins. Wash them white as snow. Just please save me. Save me in this moment because I know that I've sinned. And I know that if I were to die today, that I would spend eternity in hell. And I want to be in heaven with you, Lord. I want, I want to be there worshiping around the throne. So please save me in this moment. So once you've admitted that you have sinned, then the second step is to believe that Jesus Christ is your risen Savior. You know, you need to believe that Jesus came to this earth to, to uh, save us of our sins. He came to this earth so that he could go to the cross for for our sins so that we could have eternal life and that he rose from the dead and he's seated at the right hand of the Father and he's making intercession for us. So you admit that you've sinned, you believe that he is your risen Savior, and then you confess him as your Lord and Savior. You're t you tell someone that you've accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and you're a Christian. And if you've done all of that, then you are saved. It's that easy. It's very easy to become a Christian. So I want to encourage you to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior today. And I also want you to know that in Psalm 23, I just want to speak peace to people today because I know that you are struggling with brokenness. I know that you're struggling with those unmet desires and you feel like that you're all alone. But I want you to know that God is there. He's there in the midst of all of the chaos. He's there in the midst of all of the struggle. He's there right in the midst of everything that you've got going on. And he wants to love you. He wants to restore you. You know, in Psalm 23, verses 1 through 3, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want. That means that he supplies every single one of our needs. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. You know what that says to me is that he supplies every single one of my needs. He gives me peace, he gives me joy, he gives me love. He helps me to go through this life when I am feeling all alone, when I am feeling broken, he is a God that restores me. He brings peace to my chaos. He brings joy to my sorrow. He brings love to my agony. And he helps me get through this life. He gives me strength when I am weak. And I just want to encourage you with that today. I wanna to pray with you, Heavenly Father, I thank you for everyone who is watching, and I just pray that you would be a restorer for every person today, that you would meet every need, 
no matter whether it's physical, financial, emotional, spiritual, whether it's all of those things rolled into one, Lord, you are big enough, you are mighty enough, you are po more powerful. You can, you can heal anything, you can uh, just work a miracle in any area of our life, and we believe that in this moment, that you are doing that for us, and we give you praise for that. And I just pray for those people who may have drifted away from you, Lord, or for the person who has never accepted you as their personal Lord and Savior. Today, I just ask them in this moment to admit that they have, that they have sinned. Lord, I just thank you right now that my sins are under the blood. I know that you have saved me. I know that I've sinned. I know that I've sinned and I know that I've fallen short. But I know that in this moment, when I have asked you to come into my heart, that you have washed everything white as snow. All of the sin is washed away, and I am a new creation in this moment. I believe that you are the risen Christ. I know that you came to this earth to give me eternal life, and I do confess you as my Lord and Savior today. You are my Savior. You are the risen Christ, and I just confess you. I know that I am a Christian, and I thank you for the blood. I thank you for the cross, and I thank you for what you're doing in my life today. Lord, I thank you today that you are a restorer, that you are making a way for each one of us on our journey to be restored to wholeness, that those unmet desires are going to be met, that you will supply every single one of our needs. And we thank you right now for that. We know that you are a good God. We know that you are supplying those needs. And we give you praise right now in this moment because we know that you are doing something mighty in this moment. We know that you are making a way for us and we thank you for that. We give you praise in Jesus name. Amen. I want to welcome you out to our service on July the 30th. We are having a special movie night. We are showing Sound of Freedom. It's a movie that's out in the theaters right now and you can come on July the 30th at 6 p.m. We are going to show that movie um, in our p.m. service and it is a movie about human trafficking and we really do feel like the Lord is going to do something mighty in this church service because it is going to uh, just be a powerful movie. But I also know that there are many people that are still struggling with the effects of abuse of their past. And if that's something that you struggle with, you might want to come out for the service because at the end of the service, we are going to pray for anyone who would like prayer um, for just being set free from their past, from the past abuse that you may have incurred. And for those of you who may not be aware, that's something that I have in my past as well. So I want to be there to pray with you. I know that God has more for you and I know that God can restore you and that the Lord will give you peace over your past, just like he's done that for me. So tomorrow, July the 16th, come on out 1030. I will be preaching uh, 6 p.m. Chaplain Debbie Thompson will be preaching. Once again, our address is 1146 East Plant Street in Winter Garden, Florida, Remnant Church of God. And I am the pastor, Stacy Bryan. And on this Saturday, I want you to know that I love you, but Jesus loves you more. Have a blessed Saturday.